Hello and welcome. This is Cujo Sound White Nose Trash in the Unity series. Uh, I'm Bjorn Jacobson and I'm about to show you a little bit about audio mixer snapshots and audio mixer in general, how it works, um, especially with the collider that I've explained in some of the previous episodes here. So we have here our collider and we've made it possible for it to start and stop a sound whenever you enter and trigger and whenever you start the game or should you enter and leave the, the, the collider. Um, but what we can do, instead of altering the volume like that, we can click here and create an audio mixer. There's currently no nothing there. So we can make a new one and let's call it ambience mixer. And right now there's only a group called the master group. We'll make a new one called the laboratory. This is the laboratory group. And by that, we can then click our sound here and say we want it to, you can click the little dot here and then choose where in the mixer you want it to be played from. So let's choose laboratory. And you'll see now when we press play that it is here. We click edit in play mode. We can change the mixer like that so with the mixer like this also comes something called a snapshot so let's say we want instead of our sound here we'll, del we'll delete this script and create a new one we'll call it audio collider snapshot okay here we are and what we can then do is that just as before this is connected to the, the collider so we have an void on trigger enter and we need a void on trigger exit so now we have those um which means that now that when we enter and exit the collider, we can change things. So what we need, and that's a little bit, little bit special, but that's like using a plugin in your average digital audio workstation. workstation. So we say using unity engine.audio up here. That means that we're loading all the audio features that isn't in the standard package. Um, the reason why you can do this is because you don't want to load this for every script you have in your game. Uh, it'll simply take too much power to do so, or it'll be expensive, at least in terms of power. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to make a public audio, I still can't play. public audio mixer snapshot we'll call it inside collider snap and we'll make another one called audio mixer snapshot call it outside collider snap so now we have two public audio mixer snapshots that we can alter from our inspector view they'll come up over here once this is loaded so these two here are loaded now and nothing is happening but let's make this over here instead of calling it the laboratory we'll just call it remove and we'll make a new one called inside collider and another one called outside side And so they're both ch children of the master, meaning that they will play out of the master. And if they were children of each other like this, then the volume of each of them would affect each other. And we don't want that. So now we have an outside collider and an inside collider. And we want our sound here to play only from the inside collider so if this plays on awake you'll see it come out of the inside collider 
So what we want to do is that we want a duplicate of this one. It also plays on awake, but it has, let's say, a different pitch so that we can clearly tell the difference. Here we go, one, and this one here has a different pitch. There we go. So this one has one pitch and this one has the other. So we want this one here to come out of the outside collider. So here we have our snapshots and we have our inside and outside collider faders. Now let's say we have a snapshot and create a snapshot called inside collider. And when we're inside the collider, we only want to hear the inside sound supply. We'll make another one called outside collider. And when we're in the outside collider one, we want it to be the other way around. Like this. And that means that on our cube here, we can say, as you saw here in our script, we have these two public ones here. We can attach these two snapshots to it. So inside the collider snap, we have a public one over here. We'll call it inside collider. And the outside collider, let's put it like that. Good. So in the code, we want it, whenever we enter the collider, we want it to fade to one of these. And we can do that over here to say inside collider snap. And it knows that it's a snapshot because we have determined that over here. You can say dot transition to, and we give it a value of 10, which should be 10 seconds. So let's go. That means that it fades to the outside collider 10. We can also, and right now it doesn't do anything when we exit. So it starts in whatever snapshot we have determined. We haven't determined one, but it'll just start probably without a snapshot. So once we enter the collider, it'll transition to the inside collider snap, which we had to, which we have set to fade down the, the slider for the outside collider. Now, if we press play on both these sounds and on the outside here, let's say outside collider snap dot transition to 10. Now we'll make it five seconds. Here we go. So we have whenever we enter the collider and when we exit the collider, it will fade, it'll change constantly between these two snapshots here. And you'll see these two fade in and out. Let's try it out. So now we are inside the collider and it automatically over a five second period fades to the snapshot here called inside collider. If we walk out again, it will crossfade automatically to this. It's not very elegant, but you, you get the picture. Um, and with this, we are going to move on in the next episode to create some prefabs so that we can create some sort of, some sort of uh, automated system that can fade between two items in our game. Hope you enjoyed this one.